Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas uh, obviously here on Facebook and on Instagram if you're watching live on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest and a variety of other platforms. You can find me when you search my name, David Rao or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be spending some time both here on Facebook Live and also simultaneously on Instagram Live for those of you who are watching to talk through my uh, lessons for the week. This week I'll be talking about all of my lessons, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, and then doing a deep dive on fourth grade lessons, uh, well, my fourth grade lessons, so you can see my process and how I teach that lesson and some of the things that are involved in that lesson. Um, if you're interested in any of the things that I talk about tonight, um, you can find um, a whole a page of my website devoted to the links and resources and everything I'm talking about. If you're watching on Facebook, um, in the description for this video at the bottom there should be a link um, directly to that recap page. If you're watching on Instagram, you can go to my blog, which is makemomentsmatter.org. Um, go to makemomentsmatter.org slash videos or click the video tab and then down at the bottom of that page it should say Musical Mondays Recap and all those resources are right there. Um, if you're watching uh, and you're like, oh, I can't watch all of this tonight, um, I archive all of these videos on Facebook uh, once they're done in the videos tab. And also, I'm, tr I'm trying to get a YouTube page up and running so you folks who are watching on Instagram, you can watch these later um, uh, in the week or whenever, uh, because after a day, face uh, Instagram Live just goes away. So if you go to YouTube and search for my name, David Rao, um, you can find my channel which is weird to say, um, and all the videos will be archived there. Um, in, in that realm of new fun things, um, my podcast, Make Moments Matter Music Education Podcast, is now on Google Play. So that's exciting. If you listen to Google Play, it's there now. Hooray! <laughs> okay, um, I want to get right into lessons because I know you guys don't want to sit around and hear me talk about random things like Google Play and YouTube. It's exciting for me, but it's maybe not for you guys who already watch and listen on Facebook. Um, so as always, thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you have comments or questions along the way, please leave those questions or comments, especially if you're a Facebook um, watcher or listener. I can go back throughout the week and answer any questions you might have had or comments or um, if you're on Instagram, it's really cool to see people talking and communicating there. If you see a comment or a question along the way that I don't immediately address or that you think is cool or really just a good addition to the conversation, reply and like comment to that person. Um, my whole point of doing these videos is to help our music education community grow closer because it, too often we feel like islands in the middle of a huge vast ocean and don't see one another. And so to be able to comment in real time in these videos is really cool. So especially if you're on Facebook, I know that's possible. Instagram Live is sort of new to me. I don't, I don't know if you can comment on each other's comments. If you can, great. Otherwise, maybe it can be like old school chat room and you can just communicate to each other like that. So um, one more thing. Um, last week after the video, I asked you all to give me some feedback on a Google form. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, and one of the things you said was go a little bit quicker through the K5 recap. Okay, so if um, as we're going through that, if you're like, wait, but wait, go back. I want to know what you're talking about in the in the notes section. I'll try and leave more things, but leave me questions if you if you don't see those links, and I'll try and fill in the gaps a little bit more. A lot of people also asked about standards and wanted me to talk about how I'm addressing standards and um, maybe how I integrate those or how I'm uh, making sure that I'm hitting those standards. So at the end of my lesson today, at the end of fourth grade lesson, if you're like, I heard it all, bye, um, you might want to stick around because at the very end, I'm going to go back and say like, these are the standards that I went through and here's why I was intentional about getting those standards in this lesson. And here's how I communicate that with my admin. I'm going to do that at the end of the fourth grade lesson so you can sort of reflect back and like, oh, he did sort of do that and um, we can talk about that. Okay, so I'm going to do a real quick recap about of my K-5 lessons for the week um, and just share. I'm on a new rotation. It's so exciting. I'm on rotation four. I've been in school six weeks, five weeks. Um, but that's what happens when you have 1,200 students is you have a, a very long rotation. I have an eight school day rotation. And so um, in the next, this is my last normal fourth grade rotation. In the next one, I'm starting Christmas music because our, our concert is in December and I will see them six times between now and then, if I'm lucky. It's good times. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna run through my lessons for the week. 
Um, kindergarten, uh, when they come in the room, I do that Choo Choo Train song. I do it a lot for this whole first semester. Um, it's just a great way to get them in the room, but this time I lead them in different pathways and things. Um, that takes us right to our circle time. We do engine engine number nine with the B section that I talked about several weeks ago in this videos. Um, I have a train whistle, which I pull out and use with them. That transitions to sort of a compare contrast with a slide whistle. And um, we talk about how they're different, how they're the same. And then I, I play patterns on the slide whistle that the kids echo with their voice. I say, um, as you're singing, as you're using your voice, paint with your finger. And so that sort of helps them mimic the slide action. Um, and they also, it helps them start to connect. Going high means going up, going low means going down. High with your voice, high, uh, low with your voice, and then high and low in the space. So that's something I do. Um, we learned where his thumb can last week in kindergarten, so we do that again. The thing that's different this time is that, that now um, Thumpkin tries to come out for each one. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? And Thumpkin comes out and we're like, no, no, Thumpkin, you're doing that wrong. He's a trickster. Um, and then we transition, we go out to a scattered space. We learn how to do that. And we uh, sing, let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap hands like me. Come on and join into the game. You'll find that it's always the same. And then that takes us to, of course I do it way slower with kids. Um, but then that takes us to different actions, clapping, patting, whistling, you know, whatever we can sort of come up with. Um, so that's a fun exploratory section for kindergarten. Um, and so it's, it's fun for us to do and it's fun for them to explore and to be in their own shared space or, or their own scattered space and try that out. Um, then in flies Snowy the owl, my little owl hand puppet. She talks about singing voice. That's one of the, the ways that I introduced the four vocal timbres. Um, and I uh, use it. She flies up and down, which mimics the slide whistle action we just did. Um, but I use puppets to do the four vo vocal timbres, uh, speaking voice, whisper voice, singing voice, and shouting voice. And I did a blog post about this. And that's linked in the, in the comments if you want to see how I do that. And then she sings who are you? She gets up to each kid and will sing, who are you? And they sing back their name with their singing voice. And she gives them um, an affirmation, a high five or a fist bump or bump on the head. They like her. Um, and then it's time to line up. And um, I see some great comments on YouTube. I'm going to come right back to those in just a second. Um, I'm doing a new lineup song. I have never done this, but I was really inspired by my friend Andrew Ellingson, uh, who teaches in Decorah, Iowa. Um, he does a song to end every class, and he uses um, a traditional lullaby. If you're following me this week on Facebook, one of the reasons I said, uh, or I asked for what are your favorite lullabies, um, extra points if it's in a foreign language, well, I was sort of looking for what's a great song to maybe end class. Plus also I have a unit coming up about lullabies and I needed some more examples. So thanks everyone for commenting on Facebook with that um, and Twitter actually. Um, but uh, he does um, a different song and I, it just didn't feel right in my voice or didn't seem like it was the right song for me. So um, I chose the song um, Arirang, which is uh, like the unofficial Korean national anthem. It's one of the best known folk songs in Korea. Um, and it's worked out pretty well. Um, I've only been doing it this rotation, so now I'm on day three. I do it with K1 and 2, um, and they really like it. Um, what's fun about it is because it's actually a lullaby, um, I, I prep them for it and I say, okay, we're going to do a lineup song. And um, part of it's not in a language that you know. It's probably you don't know. And uh, so I want you to listen for it. I sing all the way through the song the first time. And then we sort of, I, I talk about how part of it's in Korean and part of it's in English. And I, I want you to this time, you know, if you're, you know, different grades do different things. But um, if you're my kindergarten, first grade do, if you're a boy, you'll want to line up in the green line. If you're a girl, you'll line up in the blue line or second grade, we line up by our different family teams. Um, and I ask them, you know, where are you going to go? Point to where you're going to go. Tell me where you're going to go. Great. Now I'm going to sing and you need to do that silently because you're going to listen to me singing as you walk. And if I hear that you're arguing or see that you're arguing, I'm probably just going to, as I'm singing, I'm probably going to point to the back of the line to remind you, you need to go to the end because you've been arguing because you're, you're ruining our, our song or not ruining. I don't say that. Um, you're interrupting our song. 
so you'd need to go to the end. So don't do that, and I won't have to point you to the back. I haven't had to send anybody to the back of the line so far. <laughs> um, but I just sing the song. I sing through the very first part um, is in Korean, like the first phrase. I can learn that much. And then the rest is in English. I don't know if I love the words. Um, so I'm just going to sing through it once for you. Um, and I posted the lyrics and music on that recap page. So if you want to download it and use it for yourself, great. Um, I don't hold any rights to anything because it's uh, based on a Korean folk song. Um, but I, I posted that there for you if you want to try it. Um, if you have suggestions for better <laughs> English lyrics, great! <laughs> Save those. Um, so the song is singles like this. Class is done, time has flown away, you must go. I wish you could stay to sing and play all day, but when you come again I'll be here waiting for you. Sorry, the D is a hard chord to play, and it's a lot easier to play when I'm playing on my uh, concert ukulele at school. It's a little bit bigger, or the tenor, I do that. And then once I sing through, I hum it, and I ask them to try and hum along. Um, or I do ooh, or something like that. And they're, they're actually able to try, it. they like mimicking it. If they're not able to do it right away, they like trying it. Um, but then I stand up there with a the ukulele, and when I'm done, I say, uh, you know, ooh. you're in the girls line or whatever you know you'll walk out first and then of course I open the door and it's like crazy outside but we end calm <laughs> so I sort of love that and it, it sort of puts just a cap on the lesson and um, it's fun sorry I wanted to demo that because it's new and I do it for three grades so I thought I would share that um, but like I said that music is on the recap page so if you want to try it yourself if you think there are better words than time has flown away let me know. I'm willing to change it. I kept doing it this week and I was like, I don't know, that feels a little weird, but I would love to hear uh, your feedback. And that's my kindergarten lesson. Um, first grade, they come in, um, we make our circle with our circle song. Um, we do the game copycat, copycat, one, two, three, do what I do after me, um, which you can Google and find that sort of all over. Um, I sing my, where is David? Here I am. There you are. Where is Tracy? Here I am. There you are to do attendance. Um, we scatter out. We do head, shoulders, knees, and toes, which we did in the previous week, but it's sort of a recap. And then we spend most of the rest of the lesson doing uh, Jim Along Josie, um, which is a pretty fun little folk song. Um, but what we do with Jim Along Josie is once they learn it, we sort of process through it and then... Um, we change the words instead of hey Jim along Jim along Josie uh, we do walk Jim along Jim along Josie skip Jim along Jim along Josie and I do three or four different options and then I let the kids choose they might choose from the movement word wall or not um, but I let them sort of choose and by that point um, class is pretty well done with all of those things we've done is sort of zoom through <laughs> with all those things we've done um, and I also I spend a little time once we're doing going out to scattered positions I spend time doing that so it takes a little bit of time um, and then we do our new closing song and we're done second grade they come in we do it's very similar to first grade actually in the beginning we do our circle song we do copycat copycat um, we do where is whoever and what's really fun is right now um, they're 45 minutes sorry Amy somebody else asked that how long are my classes are 45 minutes um, what's funny now is with the where is Amy here I am. There you are. Now, in my older grades, second grade, like, they know what's coming. So if I go, where is Amy? She'll go, here I am. Instead of you, here I am, she'll sing back. A lot of kids are doing that, and I encourage that, because that's where it's going to go. Um, we learned Charlie Over the Ocean last week in second grade. Um, so we do a, a very quick recap of that. Um, then we scatter out to a personal space, and we learn Little Sally Walker which is a super duper fun song. Um, I sort of take a little bit of time going through it just because I want kids to really understand the words. So I do a visual up on the board, um, the favorite folk song sets that I do um, and have made. I, I go through that, especially because I want them to see the 
the teacup and the saucer. And if you're not familiar with the song, one of the words is Little Sally Walker sitting in a saucer. And so a lot of kids don't know what that is. Um, or if they do, it's they think like flying saucer or whatever. So I spent some time talking about that and showing that. And I have a visual on the board too. We go through some of those words. Um, that takes a little bit of time. And then there's a, a game where they, um, if you have the really awesome book, Step It Down, um, which talks about African-American playground games, um, it gives some, a sort of an explanation of how that works. You can also find it online. Um, but there's a circle game where the kid in the middle is little Sally, or if it's a boy, little Sammy, and then they spin and point to a new person. So we, we go through that, and then we sing the little lullaby song, and we're done. It's, it's um, not a lot of time in 45 minutes, but there's a lot that we get done. Um, my third grade is now into concert prep. We have a concert in November. Um, so it's, it's like right before our Thanksgiving break. I didn't want to just do like turkey songs. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm taking um, a set of resources I have that I have on my TPT site, but I've also sort of talked about a couple times before. They're called rhythm sorts. And each um, little card has a rhythm word on it and then, or sorry, a word on it with its rhythm. So this time I pulled out my fall foods set. And so like it'll say, it'll have say turkey and it'll go ta ta or it'll say pumpkin, ta ta or say broccoli, ta dee ta. And each card has a picture of the item, the word and the rhythm. And so what we do with the cards is we play around with them, do a, a couple things with them. And then we put them in an order we like into a word chain, just eight cards in a row. And um, I made up a little sort of silly poem to go with it. And for the concert, for our performance, we'll do the poem and then I'll have one class say the word chain, uh, a word chain that they came up with in class. And I'll show pictures up on the projector in our gym during the concert, but it's basically showing parents that like, this is a composition activity that we actually do in class. And here's a mega performance of it at the concert, but it's just a poem with things that they've created based on those rhythmic words. Um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know if it's going to work for the concert, but I think it'll be super fun. And I love that parents are going to actually like see pictures from inside the classroom and they'll be able to see some of the patterns that kids have come up with on their own. And I'm going to take some of, one of the last things we do is that once we've done all those cards is that I have kids write down on a worksheet just so they have something to take with them and so that I can reference back. And so I'm going to post all of those in the hallway so as parents are walking in or walking out, they can see what their kid has actually created. Um, and then also sort of connect that with what we did. So, but that's one activity that we're, I'm going to bring back and use for our concert. And I'm also excited because it means that I don't have to spend a bunch of time learning the song that then we perform. It's like something we're actually doing in class that um, actually hits our standards and, and what we're actually learning. I'm going to skip fourth grade because I'm going to do a deep dive on that in just a few minutes. Um, fifth grade, they come in, we do attendance, we do a little echo, and then... Um, we do a song called Doom Doom Dada, which I learned from Amy Abbott, who's fabulous and wonderful. Um, and then I found it on her blog, which she um, has there on her blog, and I have a link to that in the show notes, um, or the video notes, or whatever this is. Um, and we go through that, and one of the fun things I like doing with that is that there's a hand clapping moving game, and there are like a lot of different options to it. Um, and so we do like three or four or five different options that, that go along with the song. And that leads us to the next activity, um, last week we did a song called Shanghai Chicken where we're taking um, egg shakers and passing them and tossing them. So what I do in Doom Doom Dada is show them a lot of different options and variations so that when we get to the Shanghai Chicken, their final activity of the day is that they have to work in small groups to create their own variation of Shanghai Chicken. And so in the very first song we did, Doom Doom Dada, they saw five or six or seven variations. In Shanghai Chicken, they'll see a couple variations but then they create their own. So this first activity that we do is basically all about, you could do this, 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 you could do this. And I show them easy versions and hard versions and they get to sort of decide what their favorites are. But I really think that it's important to give kids a chance to explore and try a bunch of things or at least get in the mindset of exploring and trying different things because that encourages them to do that then later in the song when they're working in a small group. Okay, that's my K through five lessons. Um, I'm gonna jump into fourth grade um, and, and do a, a sort of deep dive into fourth grade and tell you um, how I go all the way through it. 
Um, when kids come in, it's similar to third and fifth grade, at least the start is. They come in and they find their dot spots on my carpet, their assigned spots. And then um, I do a quick attendance and, um, and then we jump into our song. We've been learning Chester, the song Chester for the last three or four weeks. In the, the last class, um, in the last rotation, in the third week rotation, um, I had them evaluate themselves, monitor themselves, so that if they were going along and doing the words and doing the actions and they made a mistake, that I would have them sit down. They keep singing and there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. I make a big deal about that. But the reason I did that was so that if kids are monitoring themselves um, and they know that they've made an error, them sitting down is just a signal to me that they've, you know, had something go wrong. Um, and so that, I mean, that's self-evaluation, that's self-monitoring as you're singing and, da and dancing and doing actions and stuff. And that's pretty, pretty high level. It's, it's hard for them to do it first. Um, so I have them do it sort of um, out of the stressful or out of a stressful sort of a situation mindset. And then um, it, it feels like a game. And then um, later, if I need to bring it back or when I'm ready to talk about, you know, evaluating music and musical performances, which is one of our standards, um, I can say, like, remember when we did Chester and you sort of evaluated yourself and, and thought about what you're doing? Anyway, we did that in our previous lesson. So in this lesson, um, we just sort of do a, a tiny recap of that, um, a very shortened version. And one of the things that I do with that is that when kids, um, when kids are evaluating themselves, um, I say you need, you need to sit down. Um, if you make a mistake, it's okay to make mistakes. Just keep singing, but sit down to show me that you know. Well, the last two kids standing get a prize because while I do want them to evaluate and while I do want them to um, go through that process, I also want them to strive and achieve to try and stay standing as the last two. Um, and so in the previous lesson, um, I, I think I've talked about this a little bit, but I, um, I had them sort of go through not knowing there's a prize and they get a prize and then after that they're like motivated to get the prize. Well, when I do prizes, um, I don't usually do food prizes, I usually do you know, cool kid spray or popping a, a bubble wrap bubble or something else. And um, I do that mostly because I'm worried about allergies. <laughs> and I, I know that food rewards are sort of looked down upon. Um, and so I don't do that a lot. Um, but the one food reward that I do sometimes do is, um, and I learned this from my cooperating teacher and my student teaching. Um, she said, I call these sprinkles. They're thank you sprinkles or good job sprinkles or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I was like, I know you call them something else. And they're like, pixie sticks or sugar sprinkles or whatever. I don't know. They have weird names for them. Um, but my cooperating teacher was like, these are the best food reward prize if you're going to do them because the only thing kids can be allergic to is the dye. And so take out the reds because that's the most common allergic dye or whatever. Um, the rest is just sugar. They're not going to choke on it because you can't, I mean, unless you like cough on the dust or whatever, but you're not going to like physically choke. Um, so it is like, she said, is the least allergy, allergen possible. It is the most kid-friendly thing you could have. And it's like straight sugar. So um, anyway, so that's that. If I ever do a food prize, that's what I do. But I don't even give them the whole thing. I say, great, so you're the last two standing. So each one of you gets to come up and split. And I go through the process of how you take it. And you have to agree, you know, on what color you like best. And then you just snap it in half over the trash can. And one person gets half and the other person gets half. And then you eat it and go sit down. That it works wonders for kids because then they can't like take it with them to like the next class because it's it'll fall apart and the sugar will come out. Um, so they can't take it with them. They have to eat it there. It's only half of the stick and they have to agree with whoever they're with. And so it, it makes life pretty easy. They finish and then they go back and then they can't win again that day. Okay, so that's what I do just to start. I do Chester, I run through it, I give um, the, the prizes we do maybe two times or three times. And then I say, okay, it's a challenge. This time if you make a mistake, don't sit down. Stay standing, keep singing, don't sit down, just, just keep going. And so that's when I start very slow and I get faster and faster and faster and faster. And the kids think that's hilarious because I'm at the piano sitting and playing. I'm a pianist, I like doing that. Um, and so, I just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then they're like exasperated and they think it's so fun. Um, but really I'm just encouraging them to like, if you make a mistake, just pick back up and keep going. And they like that. Um, so then I move on to our like big song for the day. Um, and that's one of my very favorite folk songs ever. And kids like 
always, all, well, always, I say always, and then you'll go try it and it won't work. No, they very often love this song. Um, it's called Chicken on a Fence Post. I learned this um, in my ORF level one, and I have used it every year since. Um, so I start this song by picking up, of course, <laughs> a puppet. <laughs> I don't do puppets a lot for, for third, fourth, and fifth grade, so I pick up my puppet. Um, this puppet, actually, I found out today because I was trying to find a link for all of y'all. It's discontinued. It's so sad. Anyway, um, it, or you could like buy it on eBay or like the black market, puppet black market for like 80 bucks or whatever, but don't do that. Actually, you can sometimes find it in like Barnes and Noble or like wherever in the, um, in the kids section. Um, and, uh, it has, um, it has, you can find it there or you can sometimes find it at like West Music at their booth, but I, I looked on their website and they're out of them. So anyway, um, I pull out the chicken and I say, you know, a long time ago when people lived in um, this part of the state, in, in Woodstock, there weren't so many stores, there weren't so many people living here, um, and a lot of people lived on farms. And when they lived on the farms, um, they wouldn't go to the store to get food, they wouldn't go to the store to get what they needed. A lot of times they would grow what they needed to eat on their farm, and they would grow what they needed um, to keep their animals alive. And so, man, what kind of things do you think they might grow on their farm? And then that's like a great, hilarious question because they should know some things from their state history lessons and they should like, I don't know, infer some things from their other lessons. Um, but it's fun to go through that with kids. We talk about, you know, some crops or things and I say, okay, great. And they might have these, right? Animals, what other animals? And we sort of go through that. Um, and kids love that because they, they like giving answers and they love that it's you know, something that they should know, so they have an idea about it. Um, so we go through and then I say, right, well, let me sing you this little song. Um, let me see if I can get into. Um, let me sing you a little song and it's about an animal on a farm. It goes like this. Chicken on a fence post can't dance, Josie. Chicken on a fence post can't dance, Joe. Chicken on a fence post can't dance, Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie, yo. Did you hear about the animal in the song? And they're like, yeah, the chicken. I was like, yeah. You know what, there's some other people in the song. Actually, there are a couple names of people. I was wondering maybe you could listen for those names. There are at least, at least two. So listen for those names, at least two. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Joe. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie. -o. And then we pick out some of the, the names, um, Josie, Joe, and I sometimes, I'm, <laughs> sometimes I'm hard with them. I'm like, it's Joe. Does that mean J-O-E, like a boy? Or does it mean J-O, like a nickname for Josie? And then they get confused and I'm like, yeah, it can be inside. Anyway, um, so that's sort of funny to have that moment. Um, and then Susan Brown, and I say her name is Susan Brown. Why do we say Susan Brown E-O? And some, if we have the time, I'll ask them that, but it's because we add the EO because it needs to rhyme. Susan Brown EO, but it's really Susan Brown. Anyway, so I asked them to listen for the names because I want them to really listen to the words as I'm singing, not just to like sit and sort of passively let the song wash over them. But I asked them to listen for something specific so that they're really actively listening to the song. So um, I do that and then I say, you know, we talk about a chicken on a fence post and um, a fence post. So we talk a little bit about um, fences, why would you have a fence on a farm? And, you know, kids will say, well, like, to keep your animals in. Yeah, exactly, you wanna keep in the animals, all those animals we talked about. Why else might you have a fence? And I'm like, hmm. And today I had kids who were like, to keep people off your yard. I was like, well, farmers didn't worry about their yard so much back then, but I guess, you know. Um, we finally come to like, to keep other things or other people or other animals out of our space. Um, and we talk about maybe some animals that might like to try and eat the chicken and, um, and like maybe like a, a wolf or a coyote or whatever. Um, and so then we, we talk about that, huh? <laughs> Guess what? That's going to come back. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, uh, we, we talk a little bit about the fence and then I pull up the words on the screen or I pull up a picture on the screen. And actually I do have the, the favorite folk song set that I use. I know it's probably hard for you to see that. Let me see if I can make that brighter. Nope, can't do that there. Oh, I can sort of do it. Okay, so I, I have the chicken on the fence post and I, I show them this because I want them to see 
like sort of a visual of what the fence is and the fence post. And I have, you know, like a chain link fence outside my room, so that doesn't really give them a great example. But um, I go through, I do a little bit of a history. Um, sorry, Facebook people, I know that's sort of hard to see because it's bright behind me. But I have these visuals because I want them to see the fence post. I want them to sort of see what it looks like and to get that visual in their head because we're just in our classroom. And you, I mean, if you can't conceptualize what that is, it's sort of hard if you don't live on a farm or see that all the time or you just see like a fence like in a subdivision. It's not the same. So we go through and we talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you totally cannot see that. I'm so sorry. Um, so anyway, we go through and we do some of that. Um, and then I get them to repeat the words for me. And I usually speak them first because I found, at least in this year that I've taught it, it's hard for kids to say those words fast. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie, at least the first time. Um, so I, I speak it maybe once or twice, then we sing through it once or twice. We do it by rote, by phrase, to make sure they've got, got it. Once they've got the song all the way through, I say, I think the chicken is going to add something special to this song. Um, let's see if you can just notice what he's going to add. So then I do it again. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Joe. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie. -o. And, you know, kids immediately are like, it's the beat. And they start patting the beat on their knees. Ah, not the beat. <laughs> and actually, in our last lesson, we talked about ostinato patterns, short repeating patterns. Like, that was the big crux of the lesson. So that's one of the reasons I'm intentionally doing this next is because I want them to remember from their last lesson, ostinato pattern. It's also a precursor to what we're going to do with instruments, but I want them to remember ostinato. So, chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Joe. Chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie. -o. And they watch the chicken. Eventually, they get that it's a short repeating pattern. Um, and so we go through and we... Um, we move that to our knees. It's actually the pattern that they're gonna play on the bass xylophone and bass metallophone when we get there. Um, so doing the body percussion first gets that feeling in their body and it gets the action of their hands going on their knees, even though, um, even though, sorry, Facebook, I don't know why my picture's doing it. Um, it gets the, the action of that in their hands and um, going. Sorry, Facebook is getting real dark. It looks like a preview for that new movie, The Nun. So sorry about that. I don't mean to freak you out. Anyway, so the, the chicken... I want to come back to that um, in a couple weeks. Um, so in this lesson, what I do next, um, I could just put that... Um, pattern into the Bordoon on the bass instruments, but I don't. So instead, um, I have them stand up and make themselves into a big fence. And we do that by just making a circle and grabbing hands. And I say you have to grab hands for this to work because if you don't, the coyote or the wolf or whatever might um, see an opening and get into our farm. And so what I say to kids, cause some kids are hesitant holding hands, right? So Instead, if I don't, I'll say take hands, I'll say um, grab hands or something instead of like hold their hand. They don't like those words. So we might hold hands. I might have kids hold wrists and they're like way more, I don't know, willing to do that than, than not. Um, so they, they grab hands and the chicken will come and I'll stand behind them and I'll sit the chicken on their head <laughs> and he'll bounce around on that Bordeaux pattern. Chicken on a fence post, next kid. Can't dance Josie. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance Joe. And he jumps around and they think that's hilarious. But mostly I just want them to sing one time in the circle before I add anything else. Um, so we, he, we do that and he sort of bounces around. Um, he bounces around the circle. And I love somebody on Instagram says, I say connect with your neighbor. That's a great way to take out holding hands. Um, however, I did have kids try to link arms and that doesn't work for the game in just a second. So... Um, hands, connect your hands or connect arms or, I don't know, something. That's good. I'll have to steal that and see what we can do. Um, so then I say, this is so great. Now it is your job to protect the chicken. And I take the chicken off and I set it down in the middle of, um, in the middle of their circle. Um, and then I say, great. Okay, so you're going to sing. you got to keep your hands together. And I am going to be the wolf on the outside. And if I see any openings, I'm going to get in and get that chicken. So then I'm like, oh, okay. So they hold hands. Um, and so then we go and we sing it again. And I'm like wandering around. 
See, this is great. Well, let's make this a little fancier. Can you move while you sing? And so I have them move in a clockwise direction. They move, they move to their left as they're singing. Great. Okay, so we do that one time through. Then I go around and I tap like every third or fourth kid and I have them step forward. And when they do that, um, then I have them make one circle in the middle and there's a circle on the outside. And I talk about, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I talk about, um, let's see if it'll show you Facebook, I don't know. I talk about concentric circles because that's a math term and that's something that they're probably doing in their classroom already. And if not, they're, they're doing it this year. I asked their fourth grade teachers, I know that it comes up. And so um, I talk about concentric circles. I show them a couple examples that I can see from where I am in the room. Um, but I take the time to do that because it's another connection to their classroom that they'll go back and the next time they do concentric circles, they'll be like, hey, Mrs. MacArthur, we did this in music or whatever. Um, so they make their concentric circles, um, a circle within a circle, and they're still both going in the clockwise direction. And they say, ooh, let's make this really fancy. Inside circle, I want you to go the other way you're gonna to go to your right. I don't say counterclockwise or clockwise because they don't know what that means, but <laughs> I say you're gonna to go to your right and then the outside circle goes to their left. So now they're going in opposite directions and they think that's super duper fancy. Um, and so we do that once and that's great. And we sing through, every time we sing through, we sing through the song twice. And there's a reason that'll come up later, but I'm just prepping them by always doing it twice now. So we go through um, the song we do our thing, we're finally in the spot where we're in two concentric circles moving in opposite directions. And that, honestly, could be the end of the lesson. It could be, it could be good. Accomplished, we did it. Um, but it's not. So what we do then is um, we have the chicken in the middle, the inside circle, the outside circle. And I say, now we get to add the game. You've been doing such a good job as the fences that now we're gonna add in a little game. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have two wolves or coyotes or whatever you want to say. And their job is to get to that chicken and to try and find that chicken. Luckily, you guys are such good fences, they'll never get in. Unless someone leaves the gate open. And if you leave the gate open, the wolves will be able to get through and get to that chicken. Oh, that'd be unfortunate. But I'm gonna have the wolves come out and they're gonna be on the outside and you're gonna move around and sing and the gates are gonna be closed. At the end of the song, two gates are gonna open. One gate in the outside circle, one gate on the inside circle. And the wolves are gonna race through to try and get that chicken. They're not gonna know where the gates are. We're gonna send them out in the hallway. And then when they're in the hallway, we're gonna secretly decide the gates. Um, and so that's basically the game. So the wolves go out in the hallway, I choose two kids to open up their arms on the outside circle and two kids on the inside circle to open up arms. Um, all the rest of the arms stay closed because they're the fence and then the gates open up at the end. So the wolves come in the first time and the kids in the circles are like, this is amazing, they're never gonna find <laughs> the gates. So of course the wolves, the very first time, hello, hello Susan, brownie or whatever, and they drop their hands on the second time through and the wolves rush in and they think that's hilarious and they love it. If we had added in the instrument part by now, I would have the two wolves I would have each wolf choose a successor wolf, choose a wolf to go out in the hallway. And if we had the instruments in, I would have the wolves who had just run go take over an instrument part. Since we don't have instruments going, they just rejoin the circles. But that's a fun, quick, and easy way to add in a rotation is that once the wolves have gone, then they choose their successor and go to the instruments. And that makes it easy for those kids to, to make it through the instruments. And once you've been you know, moved around through the instruments or whatever, you just go back to the circle. So we do that two or three times where wolves go in the hallway, I choose the gates, and then we sing and the wolves come in and they run. We always sing through the song twice when we're doing that. After two or three times when the wolves are in the hallway and we've chosen our gates, I say, let's mess them up. Let's mess with their heads. Let's do this. So now we always sing through the song twice. Instead of just always going the same direction, we're going to do a switch. After we sing through the song the first time, if you're in the outside circle and you're moving to the left, hello Susan Brownie, yo. The next time you're gonna go chicken on a fence post, can't dance Josie, and go the other direction. If you're on the inside circle, hello Susan Brownie, yo, and you're gonna switch. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance Josie. But we're not gonna tell the wolves that you're gonna do that. Let's just see what they do. So I, I, like, I, like I just did for you guys, I demo like actually moving and then switching. I say, if you don't remember to switch, 
you're going to keep going, the other person's going to move the other way, and your hands are going to break apart, and that won't work. You've got to remember to switch. So um, the kids go through, we try that, we switch, and honestly, the very first time when the kids like do that switch in the middle, the kids who are wolves go like this. <laughs> it freaks them out. It's hilarious. So um, they switch halfway through, and then they race, whatever. We do that two or three more times, and by that point, we're basically out of time. Um, but by the end, if you had time to do the instruments, or if you didn't, or maybe in another lesson you add in the instruments, <clears throat> but by the end, you could have kids playing the instruments, you could have kids moving in concentric circles, you could have two independent kids who are looking for the, the chicken, you have rotation, you have singing, you have movement, you have a lot of things going on. In my lesson, in my one-day lesson, I didn't add any instruments, but I still had all of that, just minus the instrument part, and that's actually a lot to do in one day. Um, you might I just see kids once every eight days, so I sort of have to put as much in as I can at one time. So, but you might spread that out. You might do less. It's up to you, um, because you know you do what you do. It works in your classroom. I'm just showing you a sort of quick run through. But if I had more time, I would space that out a little bit more. We do more on the instruments. We'd add more instrument parts. But that's just how we do. Once we do the game once. And every successive lesson, kids will ask for it. Even in fifth grade, they'll ask for it. They'll love doing it. So um, word to the wise, just know that's going to happen. Um, I know a lot of you have talked about standards and have asked, like, how do you integrate standards or how do you make sure you're hitting the standards? And I just want to go through um, the new Georgia revised standards look a lot like the national standards. And so I want to I just went through for fourth grade for this lesson and sort of ticked off um, all the standards that I thought applied. Um, and just sort of highlight those really quickly, um, and then I'll come back to John's question here. Um, so if we're in the creating part, because, uh, you know, the national standards are creating, performing, uh, responding, and connecting. Those are the four big domains. Um, in the creating section, there's not a ton of creating um, that happened in this, in this particular lesson. I'm okay if we don't hit that because it's an ORF classroom and we do a lot of that. Um, there's maybe like a tiny bit of creating at the beginning if we do a little bit of echoing where they get a chance to um, where they get a chance to create a little bit of echoing depending on how much time we have. Um, in the performing section though, <laughs> there are a lot. Um, the main domain that I have here is sing a varied repertoire of music alone or with others. Well, in that domain, um, they're sing accompanied and unaccompanied melodies. If we get in our instruments, they're accompanied as well. Singing with others rounds canons. Game songs, partner songs, well, game song counts. Singing multiple songs representing various genres, tonalities, meters, and cultures, including at least song, one song from a foreign language. Well, this song actually comes from Texas, um, so it is a folk song that is um, native to, to Texas, but also to America. Um, perform body percussion and instrumental parts, including ostinatos while other students sing or play contrasting parts. So when the chicken does the the Bordeaux part and they're playing on their knees even if they don't ever get to the instrument part they are doing they are performing an ostinato on body percussion while they're also singing or while someone else is singing um, and so that is that hits the standard there and that's another subsection of the performing standard um, if we're talking about responding um, there's a standard listen to describe and analyze music well distinguish between repeating and contrasting sections phrases and formal structures um, I sort of hit that a little bit when I asked them to listen for the names in there because usually in class we say about in the first phrase it says this name, in the second phrase it says this name, or this name comes back in two of the phrases or whatever. We also, when we're doing um, the repeating part, we do movement that, that matches a new verse, um, and that comes up in, the, in another standard here in just a second, which Georgia at, includes movement as part of our state standards, even though it's not in the national standards. But one of the standards that we hit with that is respond to contrast and events in music with locomotor and non-locomotor movements, um, and then perform choreographed and non-choreographed movements. So that's, if I'm counting them up, oh, and then connecting, discuss connections between music and disciplines outside of fine arts. We talk about that a little bit when we go into the history and culture behind the song, um, and then perform and respond to music from various historical periods and cultures. And we, that's another reason I do the folk song sets, as I talk about this song first appeared in Texas and blah, blah, blah. Um, it gives a little bit more context. So in this one lesson, I could say I did one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of my standards. I touched on nine of my standards. I didn't go super in depth in nine of those standards, but I did nine. Thank God, because they're like 36 and I see them like 18 times in a year. So that's a lot of things to try and pack into just a few lessons. But I think I could legitimately go through with an administrator or someone else and say, well, we are addressing that in this lesson by yeah, da, 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 da. So I have a printout of my standards and as I'm going through lessons, I sort of tick those off. Um, and you'll even see, you know, on my lesson plans, there is a section for, well, I changed it in, in the lesson plan template that I have for free on my Teachers Pay Teachers, I have um, national standards. I changed it to Georgia Standards of Excellence because that's what my admin wants me to base my lessons off of. So on the, the Teachers Pay Teachers template that I provided, it's editable. So if you wanted to go in and put your state standards in there, you definitely could. But I try and always address those as I'm planning. And even if I don't talk about them in the videos, I'm trying to hit those in my planning period, I'll, planning time. I'll try and be more uh, clear about which standards I'm hitting when I do these uh, quick recaps. But that sort of gives me you know, a view into how I use the national standards in planning. Um, I'm going to do a couple quick questions here. Um, I don't know how to say your Instagram username. I didn't see the beginning and I'm doing this this week. Will you ha save this for 24 hours? Yes, it is in my feed for 24 hours and it will be on YouTube very soon. Once I download it and put it on YouTube, you can search for my channel, David Rao, uh, when you search on YouTube. Or I'm just, I think there's a link on my blog. Um, okay, you love my puppet addition. addiction. Great, me too. My pocketbook doesn't all the time, but... I like puppets for sure. I don't see any other questions here on Instagram. How long are your classes? 45 minutes, once every eight school days. Have you used the paint brushes like Shirley Salmon did last year at AOSA? I wasn't at AOSA last year. So I'll have to check you mentioned in your comment video on the website, on the AOSA website. You can um, go back and look at old videos. I'll have to look that up. That was for vocal explorations for my younger students. Um, thank you, Lisa, for mentioning that. I think that was Lisa who left that comment. Okay, and then I'm going to just check really quick here on Facebook, YouTube. Yes, I have a YouTube channel if you want to go back and look. Um, how do you assess the standards? Janelle, that's a great question. Most, most of the time it's informal observation, or if I take a video of the lesson, I'll do it. I don't do a lot of formal observation because I don't have to. And, well, because I know that I'm hitting in my lessons, um, I'm not required to give grades for each standard for each of my 1200 students. If I had to do 36 standards per student per quarter, my brain would explode. Um, and so I don't do as much um, assessing of that. I will do the like the bigger domains like the uh, evaluate music and music performances, but I won't do the four or five stand sub standards under that. I will sometimes assess that or leave a grade with that, but my grade card is weird. I get one grade for everything we do in a quarter. So how do you delineate that? It's, it's hard for me. So because my district doesn't require it, I still take some of that data, but I don't publish it with parents. Um, do you keep track of who has done what? Chicken Wolf Johns asks, no. I have 1200 students. I have like 200 in fourth grade. I can't remember that. And um, I, could, I could maybe keep it in Idokyo, but for me, I, I do this song two or three times through the year. We rotate a lot. Almost everybody gets chosen. And if they don't, they'll be the one who's like, I never got to do it. And some of them I know, I can assume, yes, they haven't. And I'll try and pick them. But uh, kids, we try and rotate as much as possible. Uh, one of the tricks I do is that when wolves choose new people to be wolves, um, if it's a boy and it's like boy, 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 every time it's been boys, 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 I'll say this time you get to choose a girl. Make sure you choose a girl. You both choose girls or whatever. And I just try and do that so that it's not like, you know, Jeremy chooses Aiden and Aiden chooses Braden and Braden chooses Raiden and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Kandinsky's Concentric Circles painting. I have not shown that to students before, but there's also um, Robert and Sonia Dulanet who did some really cool Concentric Circles paintings. I'll have to pull those out. Um, let's see if there are any other questions on here. Um, that chicken puppet puppet is awesome. Try and find it on the puppet black market because it's amazing, but I don't think you can find it on Folkmanis's website because it's out of order. Um, let's see. 
sugar them up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> With the sprinkles that I mentioned before. Um, I, uh, Susan asked, I liked your end of class closing song. Susan, I put the link to that in the show, the, the video notes that's in the comments here. And you can download that and use that if you want, or if you have better words for that song, I would definitely, um, I'd love to know which words you use. Um, yeah, well, those, that's most of your questions. Um, I don't want to take you any longer than you need to. Uh, be here tonight, so I'm going to let y'all go. But I do want to mention that if you want to rewatch this video, it will be available on Facebook on my page in the video's archive. It's also going to be available on YouTube. Um, so that if you're if you're wanting to go back, but I would encourage you to watch it on Facebook because if you do, you'll see all the comments that people have left along the way. Um, I always try and go back and answer questions or comments that people leave. So you'll see all that conversation and you probably won't get that on YouTube. But... Um, Thanks for watching on YouTube if that's where you're watching. All right. I hope you all have a great week. Thanks so much for wa watching. If you do have questions, feel free to leave them in the feed um, and they will show up and I will answer those when I can. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night.